Okay. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to our, uh, our panel here. Um, you know, I, I suppose we should start by explaining the title instead of doing introductions now that I actually look at this because it might not be clear why we picked this title. Um, <clears throat> the to beer or not to beer idea came from the fact that a lot of meetups, uh, just like DrupalCon, involve a lot of beer. Um, but not all meetups do, of course. We're going to talk a bit more later about the different kinds of meetups and um, you know whether or not they do include beer. Um, but that's where the title came from, and I hope that made some sense when you were perusing the session selections. Um, why don't we introduce ourselves? Paul, let's start with you. Where, don't have, where are you you from? don't have to get that close. No. I yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Paul Johnson. Um, in my day job, I work for LiveLink New Media in the UK. Um, but I put a lot of effort into um, promoting uh, DrupalCon. Uh, so I'm the social media lead for this conference, and I help the Drupal Association with uh, a lot of their marketing. So um, that's why I'm on the panel because I think uh, well, DrupalCon is one of the biggest meetups in the world. So um, we've uh, made a lot of um, we've learned a lot uh, over the last 18 months, and we want to share some of the experiences we've had so that you can take those ideas and uh, not go through the pains that that we've had. I'm Addison Berry. Uh, I work with Lullabot, and uh, I have actually, uh, for the five years of my Drupal career, avoided any kind of event planning at all, because it seems like a very scary thing, and people get burnt out and freaked out. And uh, But when I moved to uh, Copenhagen, uh, we had some uh, a basic um, beer meetup, actually, and uh, but there was sort of no place for new people to actually sort of plug in. Uh, to the community, and so I started up a meetup because um, I wanted to have one, and I was working with the Drupal Ladder, and it was a great way to have a meetup. And uh, so um, it's been a really interesting experience for me, and it's actually a lot easier than I ever thought it would be. So, um, not that there aren't difficulties. So that's where I'm coming from. Hi there, I'm Brock. Sorry about all the shuffling up here. Um, Karen's kind of in the, in the limelight here. Um, but hi, I, I'm a developer at Lullabut as well. Um, and I'm from Washington, D.C., where I've recently inherited the, uh, some of the organization of the local user group. Um, before that, I had been running the, um, the Drupal Ladder meetups in Sprints in, in the D.C. area uh, and will continue to do so. But um, those are the sort of the, the, where I'm coming from with the, the meetup group planning stuff. Hi, I am Karen Cassio, Tech Girl Geek, uh, everywhere. And I, I, I regularly attend the Drupal, we call them debug meetups in Denver, and I decided to start about two years, well, I guess maybe it was just last summer, uh, Drupal Chicks, or now we call ourselves Women in Drupal, um, meetup, and actually converted that recently to Drupal Ladder Learn Sprints and um, soon to be issue sprints. And I, I think that, well, the community is the heart of Drupal. And that's why I actually, I run the Drupal, well, I'm the community Drupal global track chair for Drupal cons, because I believe in the community. And I believe that the meetups, our smaller meetups, are also what keeps the community together. So it's like, what, what can make, I came up with this idea, because everyone, the meetups are so important. How do we make them awesome? Talk to these awesome people, and they said, "Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's let's have this panel." And then they gave us this humongous room. Yeah, they gave us too much room. <laughs> <laughs> a little intimidating. Okay. Can we jump into it? Let's go. We're gonna we're gonna try to keep these. Uh, we have a number of things we'd like to talk about, so we're gonna try to keep them sort of brief, um, because it turns out that we can um, we can talk at length, the four of us. Um, so we'll try to try to keep them on the short Period. side. And uh, feel free if you have questions or, or ideas or anything at any point, raise your hand. Just give us a. A wave. So is then a um, little side note too, this is, this is really built to be interactive. So the question, you're going to only see questions, not a lot of points on here. If you have a, something you want to add to the points, if you can come up to the microphone, just so we can have it on the recording, um, we want to hear your input on how you make your meetups awesome or what you'd like to see at your meetups. Um, so as we go through the questions, so we'll go ahead and start. Before we get started, just super, super quick, can we just have a quick show of hands of how many people organize meetups 
in their local area. Oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. Good start. <laughs> Is anybody in here who wants to have a meetup in their area or trying to work that out? All right. Nice. Awesome. So we have, we have lots of advice that can be given, not from here, but from there. Yeah. So yeah. these questions are for everybody in the room, not just this will for be us. A, a lesson learned sharing time. Right. <laughs> this is supposed to be. So I don't think we, we have to tell many of you then why you might plan meetups. I think uh, anybody who's been to DrupalCon knows the allure of getting a bunch of nerds together. Um, certainly there are different reasons why those people come to meetups and things like that. Some of the ones that, that we talked about were um, newbies who are new to Drupal and, or haven't used it at all and want to find out some basic stuff, find out what it is, what they might be getting into. Um, you have the more advanced people who might be coming for um, like training session kind of presentations, stuff like that. Um, and then of course you just have the people who just want to come and hang out and maybe drink beer if that's what your group does. Um, yeah, there's a very social aspect. I mean, it, obviously we, we know each other because of the software, but I have a lot of really awesome friends and I hang out with them and sometimes I don't even talk about Drupal. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> don't record that. Uh, <laughs> but, you guys want to add anything? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, it's social and it's, it's my way out of the house and I'm parenting for one night a month. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons that I've uh, heard is that a lot of people are freelancers and, and they, they spend a lot of time working on their own and then they want to go to a meetup just for a bit of companionship. Um, so the meetup could actually be um, working together. It needn't necessarily be in the evening, so that's another right. idea. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Also, the other way around, when you're in a company and you're looking for freelancers, it's also a very good way to meet them. Yes, yeah. making business connections is a, is a big thing. I'm curious, at, at other people's meetups, do you get a ton, like when you go around the room and introduce everybody, is about half the, half the people there hiring? <laughs> no, that seems perhaps regional. Oh, more than half? More than half? Yeah, yeah we, we seem to get a lot of recruiters and a lot of, hey, come work for us, we have a boat kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> They're still hiring, by the way, if you live in D.C. and want to ride a boat. Um, <laughs> so let's talk a bit about the different kinds of events we might have. You want to start? Um, well, I, I went to, a, to a, one of the meetups in London, and uh, they had a quite an interesting approach where they'd set up separate tables, and um, it was kind of dynamic each time they met. Um, they, each table, um, people would just define amongst themselves what they were interested in talking Almost about. Almost like a mini boff kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, so it, it, exactly. Um, so that was quite interesting. It was completely different to the meetups that I go to, mm. where we usually have uh, a, a speaker um, but we, we, we tried a, an idea out recently where um, uh, we, we, we've had uh, remote speakers, um, so we had our Google Hangout, and uh, that worked really well. And I thought that um, in areas where perhaps there aren't that many, many people um, uh, and you haven't got enough people to speak every month, you could, the world's your oyster. Uh, you don't <laughs> actually have to. Um, and, yeah, and kind of how perhaps Lullabot work, you know, the, they never sit next to each other and they're working, and it's just translating that uh, into uh, uh, into meetups. So it's, it was it worked work really well. So Actually, you, can you have some experience with the, the well, remote meetups, right? I do. Yeah. When we get down here. I'll, I'll oh, are we that. going down the road? I, I was, we well, we don't need to, okay. can. We totally or not. To. Or, okay, so um, I've been doing meetups, and I do, I alternate between Denver and Boulder, because I'm smack in the middle, and the women in Drupal meetups weren't big enough to do one in both places each time, plus I don't think I could get out of the house two, two nights a week, a month, plus go to the regular deep, debug meetups. So I was doing one in either city, um, and coming up with my own presentations, and then after DrupalCon Denver, I learned about the Drupal Ladder, which if you haven't heard about that... Um, you can talk to one of the, th yeah, yeah. Talk yeah. To one of the three of us, we're on the steering committee for that. <laughs> and so I've changed my meetups to Drupal Ladder meetups, and two or three meetups ago, I did part of it remote because I had people wanting to do the meetups, but they were not physically in Denver or Boulder. And so I did one that had remote abilities, and I had a, three or four people show up remote through Drupal Hangouts. I mean, God, I keep saying that. Google Hangouts. <laughs> and the rest, there was only two besides myself in the actual room. And 
We actually ended up, ended up not doing Drupal Ladder. We ended up playing with the Google Hangout toys because you can put little hats on. It's a lot of fun. But it was still fine a fine meetup as well. Yeah. It was still a proof of content, hit, though. It was really fun. And then this last one I did before I came here, I did it completely remote because I couldn't get to the situation because my husband is actually working out of state now. So I actually did the whole meetup, and I had eight people online at one point. And we spent a few minutes playing with the Google toys. But then we actually, I actually did a full-on presentation at the Drupal Ladder, and we, people were doing installs on their local machines at home and got really good feedback. And a lot of people will say, you know, thank you, I can't get out of the house more than one night a month also. So this gave me an opportunity to join another meetup without actually having to physically go somewhere. You know, one person was coming from a coffee shop. Um, so it gave another option. And I also had a couple people from really remote areas, someone like in Georgia or something, that they, they just, there's nobody, no other Drupal community members anywhere near them, and they're like, you know, I feel isolated. So. Yeah, one of the criticisms they get uh, at meetups is that they're at the wrong level. So they may be too easy, or it's not meeting the needs of the people who are really sort of high end. And you, if you mix all these people together, um, somebody's not going to be happy. Um, whereas if you do remote meetups, you can actually hang out with the, the people who are on your level. More yeah. focused. Yeah. And you group. can have... Or specialist yeah. subjects. Yeah. yeah, like break the meetups, yeah. meetups up more because people don't have to invest as much to actually get somewhere. Right. Mm. Yeah, so in, in Copenhagen, we had, so we've had this beer meetup and that was like this, the style of meetup was, yeah, meet at a bar. Um, we had no presentations or no laptops <laughs> or anything. It was, it was purely social. Um, and it was, you know, these are people who work on Drupal and kind of know each other through other channels um, and then get together and, and just hang out and talk shop sometimes and talk about other things as well and sort of just extend the social network. Um, but we also, now we've started this other meetup, which is, um, again, based on the Drupal ladder. And so it's basically people learning how to contribute to core together. Um, and helping each other figure out, like, how do I install stuff locally? What issues should I be working on? Um, and so ours is, the, so we basically have a beer meetup, which still exists, and then we also have um, basically a working group meetup. Like, we don't have a presentation. Um, there's nobody standing up at the front sort of telling everybody what's going on. Um, it's more like we get together and sort of self-organize around what aspects of stuff people want to work on, but it tends to be really focused on working on the community, not someone's website. Um, because there are definitely instances where people can come in and just be like, I'm building a website and I expect everybody here to help me. <laughs> um, and so all of our activities and working group stuff we do is focused on community contribution. Um, so those, those are the, the ones that we do. So in DC, we've, um, for the past several years, we've really just had sort of the beer meetup. Um, we, we have a bar that's very friendly because we come on a Monday night when no one else would and buy a bunch of their beer. And we do kind of lightning talks, like people will do a five minute talk and we might have three or four of those and then we just hang out. Um, but it, I, I've been finding more and more recently that people are less satisfied with those than they had been um, because we're not, we haven't been doing new things. Um, there was a push about a year and a half ago to do more more of the like get in an office space, sit down, somebody presents a topic, and those were really well attended. We had three or four of them before the guy who was organizing them uh, moved, so that kind of that kind of petered out. But um, there's been a new push recently, just in the past couple of months, to start doing those again because a lot of people um, don't want to hang out at a bar for whatever reason or are underage and can't get in. Um, you know, children can use Drupal too, and they want to come and learn how to do this <laughs> stuff. And I don't know how many people we may be excluding just by the fact that they can't even come to these events. Um, so I think you know what kind of events you plan really depends on the community where you are and what kind of stuff people are going to want. Um, it sounds like the the beer only meetups had been working pretty well for you guys for a while, but and and they had for us. But at some point you need to but there were a lot of people who doing. were excluded from right, those exactly. exactly, and just people who don't like to be in a bar. It's also really hard for new people who do not know existing people to yeah. find us and know who they were even looking for. And then you're in a bar. And there's this group of people, and you just have to walk up to them and be like, you guys do Drupal? You know, you I mean, kind of what do you so do? <laughs> awkward and so uncomfortable for a lot of people. Um, yeah. it, it's even putting you know, signs up and saying, this is the Drupal table, but it's still you have this group of people who are all drinking and talking and stuff, and someone has to break into that. And it's, it's, that's really uncomfortable, especially for someone who's new. The other consideration about having alcohol is that in a 
a venue is that you're restricting younger people from coming in, and some of the brightest people in Drupal are actually <laughs> under the <laughs> yeah. age of drinking. Yeah, very. yeah totally. Yeah. They humble the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. So, and, uh, so another thing that Paul brought up is also how often these things happen, because I think people have this expectation of uh, when I do a meetup, you know, I'm chaining myself to whatever. And um, but I, I'm curious, like, what the average is. Like, we do ours monthly. Basically, the beer meetup is monthly, and then the new working group one is monthly-ish. <laughs> Basically, when I'm in town, so I travel quite a lot. <laughs> um, but what about you guys? Um, well, uh, uh, in the preparation for this um, uh, um, panel, I did a, a state of meetups survey, um, and I had about 130 meetups around the world um, respond. Um, and we've, we've summarized the results from that, so I won't drill into too much of the detail, but um, one thing that I did notice was that um, the weekly events seem to have um, a much lower attendance, so they, they average about 10, um, whereas um, when you go to monthly, it's about 15 people, and then if you go up to uh, every two months, it's about 25. Hmm. Um, so it seems that if you don't have them too often, you get a bigger crowd yeah, together. People just can't commit to come that yeah. often. Yeah, and, and one thing that really struck me was, um, I, mean, I go to the Manchester meetup, and I always had this idea that, well, we were quite small, um, but the average um, around the globe um, it, you know, is, is about 10. And yeah. some of the meetups are only two or three people. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, and the, the, the general thing was that people should just do it. And, and even if it's only one or two people, yeah, well, yeah, if it's two or three people, it, <laughs> it's still, it's lonely by yourself. It because it can only grow from that. It's a, it's a meetup. Yeah. I'll say that um, our Boulder and Denver ones, they're monthly, and we're getting like 20, 25 people for the general meeting, not the Drupal Ladder meeting, but the Drupal Ladder meeting starting to grow too. But the Drupal, women in Drupal one, when I was doing, was getting three or four. Mm. So, cool. Yeah, we do monthly as well. Does anybody Actually. else have a different kind of meetup that they uh, would, would like to share? <laughs> do we have a mic? Mike, yep, yeah, we, yeah, we do. Or if we just kind of pass that around as needed. <laughs> yeah. Hey, microphone. Yeah. Um, so uh, I work uh, part time at Stanford, and um, it's not like, well, except for the last two months, it's not officially been associated with like you know, um, meetup per se. But for the last two years, I've been doing um, on the third Thursday of every month from three to five in Coverly Library. Um, I do uh, what I call Drupalers Drop in Help. Um, and the idea is mm -hmm. that people um, who are, first it was just within the Stanford community, people who uh, need help with their Drupal sites and then people who have Drupal experience, you know, would come and, you know, people who need help would, would get it, people who can give help would give it. And the idea was basically not to say that, okay, these are the, these are the helpers and these are the helpees, but to say, well, you know, you may be in the middle and you may have come with a question, but here's this really new person and you can answer their question. Yeah. Um, and it's been, I was actually surprised when I started out, there was about six, which was more than I was expecting for the first session. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been, it's been growing since then. In the last two months, um, I have also um, announced it on the local Silicon Valley Drupal user groups meetup thing. Um, and now we're getting about two dozen, um, whereas before it was about a dozen. Wow. Um, and one of the things yeah, that's been that really is. key to this for, for us um, has been that uh, it's been consistent at a time that everybody knows they, they don't, even if they don't see a message or something, um, that you know every third Thursday from three to five, yes. this will be happening. Consistency <laughs> is, is really. Um, we're all leaning in on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah no, and that's the thing is even if it's only consistently every two months, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. Like you don't have to have something that's consistently every single month. Like if that's just like too much and, and the community's not uh, can't do that and you're not willing to organize that. Just say, no, we'll do this. And if there's demand for increase and other people are willing to step up, that's great. But yeah, consistency, I think, is yeah. really probably pretty key. Should we go to Excellent. The next one? Thank yeah. you. Yes. Speaking, speaking of growing your meetups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there'll be a, a URL at the yeah. end of the... Yeah. Oh, the question was about the survey and where the, the yeah. summary is. And yeah, we'll have a link. We'll flash it. Okay, hi, my name is Christopher. We, uh, I, me and Axel, we organized a Drupal meetup in Stuttgart. And uh, we do something else too. Uh, we call it Drupal Cowork Day because we are also active in the co-working scene. 
And um, what we do there is making a whole day where you can sit together with other Drupal people. Not, you just do your own work, and if you have a question, you just shout it in the ra or in, into the room, and everybody else helps or helps not, and it's just yeah. a great way to work to get to uh, together all day and just um, yeah, get, get knowing uh, everybody else better and getting projects done together. <laughs> and um, it's um, growing too, and for the next meetup, which is uh, uh, the next co-work day, which is at Axel's um, um, office. We uh, already have 10 attendees who, who subscribe for that. And then we have another one in my little office, uh, uh, co-working space. And yeah, I don't know the actual counts of that, but um, I love the, the co-work day um, because it's so, yeah, it's so, you get work done and you can just ask everyone and it's very, yeah, it's very together. It's very familiar and still um, effective. Yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah, we had the problem that our uh, meetups were not that crowded. So we were searching for a possibility to get people in there. So we invented the co-working day and we tried to have the meetup at uh, the same date in the evening so we can go there. Uh, the gather them in the okay, co-working yeah. day and then have a meetup. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Nice. Right, like what did you work on today? Freelancers that come from, let's say, 100 kilometers away. This is interesting because it's not only an uh, evening event, but they can go there for a whole day and perhaps stay the night over. Mm -hmm. So they come over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, um, I'm actually not organizing any meetups, but uh, since the organizers aren't here, I think that the, the, their experience shouldn't be wasted. Uh, so I was living in, here in Munich uh, up to a few months ago, and now I'm in, uh, f near Frankfurt. So I joined the local Munich and Frankfurt groups, and I still get spam from both of them, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so basically here in Munich, the situation is we do monthly meetups of two types. So every Wednesday, the first Wednesday of every month, we have a meetup at uh, Einfeldhaus, which is uh, a cultural center with, in which we have a room and we have a, a projector provided by a local company that is now famous across all of Europe. <laughs> and and um, so we have this projector and we do presentations. And one of the things that I admire a lot about um, Martin, which was organizing the meetups here, is he has to annoy people to, cre to do these presentations. Or else we just arrive and, okay, what we are going to talk about. One of the good things is it's restricted to one hour, and after that one hour, we all go down, we, we have dinner, and we, we, take, we have some beers. Um, there was some discussion on, we, on the format, because some people wanted to skip straight to the beers. <laughs> so what they did was, on the third Wednesday of every month, there is the Drupal Stammtisch. Stamm Stamm well, mm -hmm. the Germans here can correct my German, please. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so on the Stammtisch, we just go straight for beers. And um, so basically two meetups every month. In Frankfurt, uh, it's more or less the same thing, except the presentation one is every two months, and it alternates with the, the beer one. Mm -hmm. And so, and the same thing, Karsten, who's organizing it in, mm -hmm. in uh, Frankfurt, uh, asked to annoy people. He's, he just annoyed me to, to do the presentation for the next one <laughs> in September. And this pattern of uh, both wanting presentations and beers which was actually when I organized meetups in Portugal, was something that I managed to, to marry because we basically met at a bar that had a projector at some point, and uh, this allowed you to actually have some beers and have some snacks while your colleagues were doing the presentation. So is this pattern that I see, is it common? Because in, in the US, it apparently that basically blocks uh, minors from entering, which is something not yes. That doesn't most most here. bars, if you are not over the, if you're not 21 or older, you can't even enter the bar. Okay, it sounds like that's the case in the UK. I mean, we don't have that problem here in Europe, but not as much. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. 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 It's definitely it's definitely dependent on where you are and your right. community and what's going to work. But and in Boulder and Denver, we bring beers and pizzas in. Yeah. <laughs> should, so, we, should we move on to the next one? Yeah, we have to I, have I don't want to like cut one. off discussion or anything, but we've got like six, seven more things. Sorry. <laughs> we do. Uh, and we're 20 minutes in, so. Like we said, <laughs> any one of these slides could be a 
our conversation. Yeah. So let's, <laughs> let's talk briefly about growing your meetup. And I know Paul's got some experience in the, the marketing side of things. Do you want to talk about that stuff or are we going to want to come back to that? I may have a slide for that later. That's true, we do. Aside for that later. So aside from marketing, Promo which we'll talk about. <laughs> right. Promotion, but I guess uh, like conceptually, um, well, so in my experience, we, so we have uh, the beer meetups, which we call Drup U, U meaning, well, horrible Danish, but that's beer in Danish. Um, so um, I love the name. So we had the, the beer meetups, and like I said, though, it was really not conducive to getting new people coming. It was the same people coming all the time, or just like a small group of people that were kind of rotating around. And we weren't, we weren't expanding. And a lot, of, uh, a lot of the people are like, where, where are the Drupal? I know there are lots of people in Copenhagen doing Drupal, but they're not coming to the meetups, and we're not getting them engaged with our community. We're not growing at all. We were totally stagnant. And, and the thing is, like, it was very much sort of like an old boys club kind of. It was like the people in Drupal who already knew each other, um, who were getting together. And that's not necessarily what a beer meetup is in, in other places, but that's, that's what was happening in Copenhagen. Um, and then once we started doing sort of this working group, like learn how to contribute and how to, how to learn, like we were presenting it in terms of like you'll learn things about Drupal so that you can contribute and you'll meet other people. And all of a sudden, all these new faces started to show up when we just sort of changed the format. Um, of what we were doing or gave another alternative. And so, and again, like having this idea of having maybe one style of meetup one month and a different style of meetup and mixing those things up, you know, yeah, you might not get like 50 people at your one meetup and something like that, but if you get 25 people at one and 25 at another and you've got like a, a whole different group of people going on, um, we've seen a huge increase in new people showing up now. And now some of those new people are showing up at the beer meetups um, because they're getting to know people in an environment where they feel more comfortable and then they can come to the beer meetup. So for us, like that was like, uh, it's, it's been a big change. Not that it's astronomical numbers, but when you go from having, you know, like four people at a beer meetup or five people and having more like a dozen people who are coming to meetups, that's a pretty significant change in a matter of two months. It's over 100%. <laughs> growth. Yeah. So that's 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 what we did in Copenhagen, at least, to to sort of do it is shake it up a little bit in terms of what we were providing to people. Right. Yeah, well, one of the bits of advice that came out of the um, the survey was that uh, you should make sure you choose an accessible location. Um, so mm -hmm. it could be that if you if you're struggling to to grow your event, that maybe you're actually holding it in the wrong place, or it's not convenient, or it's the wrong time. So yeah, right, or there's no parking thing. available, and yeah. you know people yeah. who don't live in the city can't come in because it's <laughs> too much of a pain in the ass. Yeah, I mean, well, and we we just know. recently learned this in DC, um, and actually I don't know how feasible this would be in other communities, but we we posted a survey, um, just about survey monkey or something like that. Just uh, what do you think of the venue and how often we have it and the types of meetups we're having. And in like 75% of the responses we got, people said, I, I hate going to this bar. It's too far away from public transit. There's no parking. It's hard to get to after work, you know, right during rush hour and stuff like that. And I think uh, that probably clued us into the fact that we need to make a change because a lot of those people responded to the survey because they don't come. So now we've got some insight into why and what we can fix. Um, I don't know if that would work everywhere. If, uh, if you don't have the online community for your local group. I don't know that you'd get the survey to enough people to make, get any good information, but um, that, that worked for us. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, aside from any marketing you might do online, you should try and drum into the people that come. Tell your friends, because everyone has this network of friends, and um, yeah, usually people don't, it never occurs to them to mention it outside of the time they come. And they go away and then they come next month, so. Yeah. Or they assume that people already need to be Drupal people in order to come to in a Drupal event, um, which is, a, I guess, a fair enough assumption, but completely not necessary. Right. Um, and so, you know, once people are like, no, no, you know, you could, we don't have to do X, Y, or Z. Like, we can, even if you do, like, an event every couple months that is specifically geared towards new people, strangers who just want to poke at Drupal a little, um, even if you only get one or two new people who are sort of just checking things out, um, then that can spread and that can grow your community by sp sort of specifically reaching out to the people who don't come. You know, making the real effort on it rather than assuming build it and they will come. Right, build it and they will come. Anybody else saying? Yep. Yeah. I have a five word, I think, I didn't count. Question, maybe you can just repeat it. Um, why grow your meetup when you don't have to grow your community? 
why, why grow, grow your meetup? That's a good question. I mean, there are alternatives that still grow the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's true. Yes, <laughs> right. I, there, there's so avoid slow down. certainly certainly the business networking side of things is important to a lot of people, like the freelancers you mentioned earlier. Um, just getting more potential networking contacts around is, is. I mean, it sounds very businessy and like let's wear a suit and talk and exchange business cards, but. There is some aspect of that, like a lot of people find jobs because they meet people at the bar. Um, but certainly the, the getting more people involved in the community, and you said there are other ways to do that, but I think having, having people there in person that you can, not coerce or encourage, <laughs> but like if there are people at your meetup and you're doing a, a talk on you know, how easy it is to contribute to CORE and you guys should try it, like I think it, that's a much more effective way to reach those people and, and drive. Not drag them into the community, but <laughs> worse <laughs> drag. I know I, I'm making this sound just terrible, but it, it's. I think having there there in person is a good way to welcome them to yes. the community. Welcome them to the community. <laughs> Embrace them to the community. I, I know that my first. Um, Good. I'm sorry. <laughs> my. I, I work for a small company and my boss was using Drupal and I'm like, okay, this seems okay, whatever. And he brings me to this Drupal meetup and I'm like, okay, and it was a crammed room and I couldn't see anything. And it was, okay, that was nice. But then later on, I kind of moved on and I was like, okay, I'm going to go to meet up by myself. And I walked in and I was kind of intimidated. And for anybody who knows Greggles, he's awesome. He walked up to me and he said something that made me realize he recognized me. And I don't know, actually, I don't know if it was a meet up or a Drupal camp. And I was like, whoa, these people recognize me. I'm not some stranger because you never, especially as a woman, I hate to walk into a room and, and just like you know, become part of the, if, if, I, if you don't know me, I will walk into the wall and you won't see me. It's, and I know that anyone who knows me will be like, what, Karen will be a wall filer? But I will. If I don't know you, I will become quiet. And the fact that somebody walked up to me and they made me feel comfortable and made me feel welcome, it was like, oh, okay, I can do this. I can be part of this group. And then, well, look at me now. <laughs> so, <laughs> For me, the two, two biggest points about why Grow Meetup are uh, FaceTime is is really important in an in an online community um, and secondly uh, sustainability I don't want to run meetups forever and I need other people and they're sort of like uh, at a certain point you need you need a certain sustainable level of people who are attending in order for other people to take over the tasks and help run things so that the group doesn't completely go away when you know I decide to move away from Copenhagen um, or, or whatever else is happening, like having other people in the group um, and a variety of people in the group to be able to take over other tasks and do other things and grow and, 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 and extend things in other ways that may not be the, making the meetup grow bigger. But So to me, I want the meetups to grow for sustainability and, right. and, and, and you know, personal reasons. Like I don't want to have to run this meetup forever because I'm, I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was one of the things that came out of the survey, um, that yeah, you just don't take, take all of the um, responsibility yourself, oh. because it's just too much work as well. Um, and, and you need it to be of a certain size as well, so that um, there's some, some variety in the subject matter that happens within the group as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you have more people, they bring different things to the table, and yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's talk about new yeah. ones for a minute. Oh. Oh. One, one. Already part Thank of the. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, if you um, uh, if you have a variety of types of meetup, then if you're doing community things, you want to grow it. But if you want to do things like code sprints, actually, what you may want to do is have people who are already established in that community, in that community, and a small group of them who can be very focused on what they're doing. Mm. So that might be a reason why you don't want to grow that sort of meetup. Right, yeah, the, the nature of the meetup yeah. could definitely change things. Indeed. Should we go on to this one? Just one, one small one idea to counter the wallflower <laughs> problem. I'm part of a hacker community, and every meeting we start with introduce yourself in one minute. Yeah. Everybody, the whole audience. 
and then next time you recognize people and if you are there for the third time you can say something new or hey I'm working on this project or I'm organizing this event and that's really really helpful and um, improve social relationship within the group yeah mm -hmm. well and we do that too but it's, it's so if you do that and then you come back the next time you're like did they remember that I said anything <laughs> it's it's the introduction I introduce myself introduce myself but I want but when somebody says, oh, I remember you, it's so much better. Yeah, it's like, the thing oh. The next time people show up, yeah. they're like, oh, yeah. They're like, oh, okay, I don't have to sit there yeah. and be brand new again. Right. All right. Let's talk about new meetups for a minute. Mm -hmm. oh, you've started one. Do you have any? Recently. Well, of course, you, you had one going on in the, the city. We did, but... It was yeah. unrelated? Uh, <laughs> really. You know, I mean, the answer, to, and I think we all totally agree on this, and everybody here started meetups or has taken one over. Um, I think the number one rule of how do you go about starting one is to start one. Um, <laughs> that is, do it. Um, find some location, even if it's, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know where to do it. I don't know how to talk to people. And the bottom line is, um, there's groups.drupal.org. It's there as a platform. There are other platforms you can use to communicate what you want to do in setting up events, but that one is there. Twitter is there. Um, and finding a venue, like if your first meetup is like, um, I'm going to be at such and such bar. If anybody wants to talk about Drupal, come by and have a drink. Or I'm going to be at such and such cafe. Um, I'll be in the back corner. And if anybody wants to come, you know, and if it's one other person or two other people, huge success. Like, it, it's not, I don't think that the barrier is that high. So yeah. to me, like, that's just, and that's what I just basically came up with a venue. I, I asked one of the, the Drupal shops, hey, do you have office space that we could use after business hours? And they were like, sure, that sounds great. Um, and, and then I, and I just posted it, uh, you know, on groups.drupal.org, and I said, we're, we're doing this different kind of meetup thing, and all these different people I've never seen before showed up. Um, one important point is you don't need to have permission from anyone to <laughs> yes, actually yeah. start a Drupal meetup. That's the whole point of Drupal. Though. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. person who wants to do it uh, makes it happen. It's very duocratic. And also, um, yeah, if you, there may be three or four other people in your city who are thinking about doing it. And if mm -hmm. you do one, then they'll, they'll come out the woodwork. So. Yeah. That is, yes. Just <laughs> I posted on, on our group, um, somebody mentioned the co-working days. And that's, there, there is a new Drupal co-working group on groups.drupal.org because uh, more and more people have been doing it. And I work from home, so just the other day I posted on our group, um, you know, would anybody be interested in this? And I got like 30 responses in a day, which is a lot for our group for anything. <laughs> um, right. It turns out everyone else had just kind of been waiting for someone to do it. Yeah. And I didn't have any plans or anything, I just said who's interested. And now I'm kind of hoping that one of those people does pick up the mantle and make it happen. But no, you just, just volunteered you know, yourself. What? You just volunteered yourself. I, you know I may that. have accidentally done so. Well, I posted it <laughs> before going to Germany for two weeks, so someone else can deal with it in my absence, I hope. Sure. I mean, we've talked about the assumption that everyone works in Drupal, but we mustn't forget hobbyists. Um, the guy in the garage is just typing away on his computer and he's doing Drupal next door, and you don't know about it. Mm. Uh, that was you. <laughs> Yeah. That was the biggest about hobbyist about, right there in the back. <laughs> and we can talk more about promotion and stuff like that yeah. um, in terms of getting the word out, because that's, of course, a, a large part of it. But in terms of the, the logistics of starting a meetup, you simply start to tell people to meet at some location. It could be a park. You don't even have to be inside. You don't have to have internet well, to talk about Drupal. In the middle of winter, probably not. But. <laughs> yeah, geeks don't, geeks don't go outside. Um, <laughs> we'll move on to the next one. Yes. Okay. Anybody, yeah, I think we all get that. So, once you've got your events, whether it's an existing group or you've just created a new one, how do you make it run smoothly? Mm. Well, I'd say one of the big things is, well, like we said, consistency and just do it. But when you, once you're there, every question, every statement is acceptable. So nobody should be, well, scoffed to a degree. Wait, yeah, to, a degree. <laughs> to a degree, if someone's being really rude or yes. aggressive, I'm, then that's not I'm assuming not you mean acceptable. more like, like there are no stupid questions, like right. new people can feel right. welcome. That's a different yeah. kind right. of acceptance. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and um, if someone does, if you say, can you do a 15 minute pre presentation, the person says 15 minutes, there should be somebody to kind of hold them to that 15 minutes. Because, you know, you get the 15 minutes, it's like, um, okay, you're now running into our beer time, so <laughs> <laughs> it's time to stop. So there needs to be somebody keeping track and kind of monitoring the session sessions and no stupid question that's one of my inputs yeah. 
uh, I would say, I mean, for, for, for mine, we, I try to be clear about what we're doing at the meetup um, when I post it and spread the word about it. So A, a that people actually know what, what to expect. Because if you are just like, we're gonna meet up, and someone comes in as expecting that someone's going to do a tutorial on, on how they can do views, or, someone's, or someone's going to be there that's gonna help them build their website. Um, and they come, their expectation may not match what you're doing, and that ends up just creating disruptions and annoyances. And come back, so. Right, for uh, a lot of people, yeah. like it, it's, it's, you know, so setting the expectation when you even announce or explain what your meetup is, I think is a big step in terms of having things actually yeah, go smoothly. Uh, for example, if you're uh, hosting a sprint, um, make sure that's clear, because if people show up without laptops expecting to learn something <laughs> new, that's not, they, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think um, Karen touched on an important point that not just for, for, for uh, women, but just for anybody considering to come to a meetup, it's quite a daunting first thing to do. Because you don't want to look dumb. And, and you make don't a know bad what, impression. What level, mm -hmm. you know, and it, so taking that first step, it's, it's quite a big thing. So uh, to actually communicate what that particular meetup is about, so you can decide to take that leap at the right yeah. point. You know, it's at your level, or it maybe it is one where it's a bit yeah. more. Beginner. Well, and then sort of on the other end of that, if you are organizing the meetup, be friendly to new people. If you yes. see someone who is alone, go say hi. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's hard to remember sometimes how nerve-wracking that first meetup really is because yeah. you know there's there's probably people there who have written modules you use and they're like little celebrities of sorts. <laughs> yeah. So it can be intimidating. And, and if you get new people, get their details. Yeah. 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 Then, if they don't come back, you can contact. Them. You can track them down. <laughs> you can drag them and coerce them. Yeah, coerce them into back into the yes. The group. Yes. Well, exactly. and if they don't come back, maybe you should ask them why they didn't come back. That's that's actually an excellent point. Oh, yeah. is that what you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Not the I also think uh, I also think it is important, and, and again, Karen touched on this is that t being aware of time. Um, if you tell people it's a one hour meetup, then end the official meetup after an hour. If other people wanna stay around and hang out, that's fine, but you need to create some closure so that those people who need to leave or expect to leave can leave without feeling like an ass. Yeah. yeah. Um, like walking because, you know, it's like, oh, well they can just, you know, if they need to go, they can leave, but that's socially awkward. And so create some closure. We're wrapping the meetup up. Um, you know, so let's help clean up. Let's do whatever. Like create some space and then be like, you know, hey, if other people want to hang out, what do you guys, you know, feel like doing? That's fine. Um, but, you know, people who need to leave then actually have an exit. And, and keeping to those times that you say is important because then people don't want to feel trapped. <laughs> and they don't want to feel coerced and trapped. <laughs> I think it's also important to start at the right time as well. Yes. Because yes. Otherwise, you can get people drifting in. Yeah. That can be just as bad. Well, I, I don't know if this is global or not, but Drupal folk tend to be about 15 minutes late in my experience. But if you always so you just plan 15 minutes late. Yeah. <laughs> not, not in Denmark. No? Are they on time? Those are punctual yeah. people. I need to work on that. As a, as a culture there. Yeah. I've got a question. Yeah, the comfortable mm -hmm. Americans are. Well, not so much a, a question as an observation. I mentioned before the kind of meetups that I do are a little bit different. Um, and one of the decisions that I made in the beginning was the idea that it was a drop-in thing. It's a two-hour space. Mm -hmm. And you know it's explicitly said drop in any time mm -hmm. in these two hours. So we've kind of, you know, it's the same thing. If we're making clear what the time expectations are, which is basically you can drop in, and by implication you can drop out. Um, and uh, this has actually you know really helped us because particularly um, a lot of the people who are uh, coming from Stanford, this is part of their work day, and they're coming because they have work questions <laughs> that they need answered. Um, and so the ability for them to know, okay, I can just come for 15 minutes and get what I can get, and then I'll be able to go. But I mm -hmm. think n being very clear about those expectations and then sticking to them yep. um, kind of applies across the board. Do them. Excellent. Thank you. This is Do we the next one? Let's yeah. go. Yeah. I think this is, uh, this is, this is Paul's Paul. area of expertise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, How do, do you promote, promote those meetups? meetups? Um, so yeah, we've done this survey, and I think I'm not going to drone on too much about it really, um, because uh, I've produced a document which you can go and download. Um, in fact, there are two. There's one that gives a summary of the um, the, the state of Drupal meetups, and I've also uh, been working with um, the, with uh, Jeffrey Maguire um, Jam, who is um, producing um, the conference right organizer. Right over there in the corner, <laughs> He's over on the top. floor. Yeah. <laughs> So, so as part of the conference organizing distribution of Drupal, which is going to power DrupalCon, uh, we're packaging up a, a marketing kit 
So you, you might want to, um, mm. for now, uh, you can go to the, um, the, the session uh, page and you'll be able to download those documents. But um, one of the things that really came out was that um, a lot of people don't know about groups.drupal.org. Um, so um, it's a good idea to use that, but um, a significant proportion of people who use Drupal just spend their time on drupal.org. So th that's an issue. Um, and some people didn't, uh, that you run Drupal meetups didn't know that there was an event content type within groups.drupal.org. And it's important that you put your meetups in there because that goes out onto a, a calendar, uh, uh, groups.drupal.org slash events, uh, which you can subscribe to. Um, and, and it goes out onto the new uh, Drupal Cal site. Drupal Cal. Did you have a and you can tell you how to say it. Drupal Cal. Drupal Cal? Drupal Cal. Drupal Cal. Yeah. Uh, which is a great new site. I like that actually, shirt. <laughs> uh, plots a map uh, of all of the, the meetups in the whole of the, the world and Drupal events as well, I think. Nice. Um, meetups and everything. Um, and one thing that really surprised me was that uh, only 5% um, of uh, meetups actually use email um, to promote their, 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 their events. And um, it's a little known fact, really, that. Uh, Email is the unsung hero of marketing. Um, to, so, yeah, to give you some evidence, 67% um, of people that receive the DrupalCon email open it and read it. Um, you, you send a tweet and it's got a very, very short lifespan. Um, you know, if you're following quite a few people, it just disappears in no time. And it's the same deal with Facebook. Um, so, so people use groups.drupal.org. Twitter is pretty much the de facto place to, to communicate to, to Drupal people. But if you're trying to get outside of that um, echo chamber, then you need to be looking at other areas. Um, and one of the big things that people talked about was that meetup.com, uh, when they started using that, they found instantly that, they, that the numbers grew. And one of the reasons for that is because it's got quite a lot of features which draw you back constantly. I went to the London meetup once. I signed <laughs> up on meetups.com and I keep going back uh, because it, 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 it gets it's my interest. <laughs> and it's a bit like how Facebook is always, you know, saying come back, someone said something. Um, we I tell you, you what, you have to click the link to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one thing I will say about meetup.com is again, I think that, that can be very regional. Um, mm. In Denmark, the only people who use meetup.com are expats. Um, like the there is the the there is a PHP group on Meetup.com, but that is the only non-expat group on Meetup.com in Denmark. So um, so again, that can be very regional and find your local equivalent. Yeah. Right, and well, and there really isn't a local equivalent oh, yeah. of of that kind of a thing. So um, but yeah, so so yeah, that's right? going to be a really regional thing. Yeah. Like, and I think like I know like in the UK and and in the US. Um, Th those can be really big things, but may not be in other places. Yeah. So. Uh, those of you who haven't heard of meetup.com, just real quick, it's, it's, kind of a so it's kind of a social site, I guess. It's paid, you pay for your meetups, but you can say like every month on the third Thursday of the month, I schedule whatever, and it'll send out emails. And so it, it'll, it's for interest groups. So you can even have like single women over 40 or moms with tots that work from home or whatever. And, um, yeah, the tots work from home. Another, um, so the, it, it, it sends out emails and it sends out reminders and it's, it's kind of nifty like that. And then it also say, hey, I noticed you joined this group. You might be interested in this group. And so a lot of U.S. groups will use meetups.com for their meetups. And another uh, issue is around uh, planning ahead. Um, there's two reasons for that. Is one is the person who is actually handling the marketing of the uh, meetup can, can, can schedule uh, a number of messages to go out with a tool, say like Hootsuite, which is the social media tool, um, and that's free. Um, but it also, um, if you plan ahead, people know when your event's going to happen a long time in advance. Even if you don't say what's going to happen on those dates, you can go back and change the, the node on uh, the uh, groups.drupal.org. Um, people can plan it into the calendar and are expecting it. Um, if you just fire a tweet out uh, the, the, the morning before, then you're not going to get the numbers that you expect. Um, and, and try and be consistent when you, if you're going to send out a message, um, try and do it at the same time every month. So if you do use email, send it out on the same, same day if you can, because then people learn to expect it. Right. Um,
Great advice. Yeah. So as I say, we, we've we've collated all this into into some Google documents, which you can can look afterwards. So I think we can probably move on. Well, I just want one more thing too is um, in terms of promotion is um, also not necessarily limiting yourself to promoting in Drupal channels. Um, there are lots of PHP groups all over the world. They tend to be larger than Drupal groups. Um, other, other related technology groups. And uh, a lot of times open source projects are totally cool with letting you promote your events as well through those channels. And so you can also do that, like the, you know, contact some other group that's around and say, hey, we're doing these like meetups. Um, how do you guys, you know, do you, is, can we post on that? Uh, do you guys send emails out or whatever? Um, and you can also reach a whole crowd that you wouldn't normally hit just by talking to the other groups Another simple thing that you can do is actually get people to just take a photo on their iPhone and, and publish that. Like that. Because um, <laughs> just actually seeing the group could be enough to see, oh, it's a friendly place, and oh, I think that looks really interesting. Oh, and there it it kind of humanizes it. <laughs> there are people there. Yeah. Oh my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> How are we the only one there? That's probably another fear, too. If I, if I go to there, is anyone else going to be there? Yeah. Cool. Next one. So this is sort of our catch all. For anything that might be left. Yeah. Anything else anyone anything wants else? to add? Yeah. Does anybody have any? Oh, can I do one real quick? You can do one. This, real and quick. I, I haven't exactly figured out how to articulate or do this well, but of course, one of the things we mentioned before is to be consistent about your scheduling, so people would know when to expect things and stuff like that. But one thing I found is that there are people who have an obligation every Monday night or something like that. Um, so they they just will never be able to make it on a Monday. Uh, so one thing that I've been trying to do is especially with our sprints is scheduled in different locations around the area and on different days of the week in hopes that people can make it but that totally throws out the consistency entirely <laughs> uh, so i don't know yet i haven't done enough yet to determine whether or not it's it's going to destroy everything yeah. joe i wanted paul to share that um, that survey with someone from the da because it's pretty clear that we need what i said this morning in the BOF that we were in, we need Drupal.org to be able to identify our users and tell them there's a meetup because they don't know about groups Drupal.org. Drupal it seems obvious. Yeah. Hey, did and you they know, know that there's a meetup in your town and there's an event right. coming up next That's Wednesday? That's yeah. I mean, Drupal yeah. probably does it already. Well, I, I see that um, Martha behind you is nodding her head, so <laughs> I think we'll probably try and work on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Marta being from Yay. the DA. So. That's a great suggestion. <laughs> Does anybody else have any other general tips or thoughts about or meetups? Questions. Yeah. Or questions. Or questions, yeah. Or questions. Or how to, or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Hi, um, I come from, from Barcelona. I've been organizing that uh, meetups for three years now and uh, advising other groups in Spain. And there's some subject that keeps coming uh, back and forth is uh, the organizer burnout because mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing that for three years and there is such no, no backup. And uh, the other Spanish groups have the same issue. Uh, they organize something, they do that for a while, constantly, they follow more or less the tips and them, but they end up not doing it. Yeah. So they, maybe uh, the summer is probably the killing point. <laughs> they mm -hmm. stop in July and they don't back, come back. So I don't know if you have guys have some tips or something. Or I would love to have answers to that too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have a little bit of advice. I mean, yeah. you have more people. Yeah. Having more share. people, but also, uh, yeah, I mean, like, not just growing, but actually having other people, like, asking other people, hey, for this meetup, um, I'm actually going to be out of town, but would you mind, like, this is all you have to do, the, the venue set up and all these things, but could you actually just be the person to greet people and make sure that stuff happens? Um, we're having other people actually help in planning stuff. Um, not asking someone, I, I wouldn't advise just asking someone, hey, you want to take it all over? Um, but, but having other people help you run it so they actually understand what it means, means that when you're not there, for them to step up or have more than one person who can step up. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you have three people who are sort of helping run the meetup and one of those people steps out, there's still two people to help make that meetup actually happen. And it's not something that's going to happen naturally in most instances. It's something I think you need to cultivate mm -hmm. and you need to walk into it. You need to identify people who would be down with that. A lot of people are willing to help but won't volunteer to help. Um, and simply asking makes a huge difference. 
It's, a, it's like that course and dragging thing. <laughs> yeah. I think it's being prepared to actually let go as well. Some, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. some people end up doing everything because they're... Control con freaks. Control freaks. <laughs> I was <laughs> trying to think of a nice way of saying it. <laughs> there is no. <laughs> <laughs> Say it as you think it. <laughs> Succession planning is key. And uh, I didn't have a question, but uh, instead an invitation. You guys have talked about um, kits in other situations around the Drupal ladder, for example. And I know that Megan has talked a little bit about kits for meetups as well, which probably helps with some of the issues you're mentioning and, and uh, even the um, transition of leadership. Do you have just a second to describe a little bit about the kits that you're thinking about? Um, well, certainly on the, on the marketing side, um, it, it, uh, the, the campaign organizing uh, kit describes in, in great detail the sorts of messaging that you'd want to do around a uh, a, a bigger event, um, uh, but the um, I, I, I intend to uh, perhaps translate some of that so that it, it could be used um, in the context of a meetup. Um, so yeah, um, this is all things that are in the pipeline, um, and I think Jam and I will probably be working quite closely on that as well. <laughs> And I would say... Like, uh, <laughs> Jan's giving a thumbs up. <laughs> it's over the, there on the floor. <laughs> the, the Drupal Ladder is a, it's a really interesting initiative to get people involved in contributing, right now contributing back to core. Um, but it's a, for, especially if someone's starting a new meetup or trying to think of something else to do, it is actually a really good idea, like an idea that can attract people. Um, and, and we're setting up, there are lessons that are already written and there's activities for people to do at Meetup already written. Um, we have documentation on how do, you, how do you run these learn and issue sprints as we call them um, and there's, the materials already exist. So there's sort of, in the sense, there's sort of a kit around that um, which we're working to improve and we have our plans and sort of our roadmap for how to improve that stuff. But um, that's a, a great way to just be like, I don't really know what to do at a Meetup. Um, but you can use the Drupal Ladder resources on uh, DrupalLadder.org as well if you want to. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thumbing through the, uh, the printout from the COD advisory. I think um, it's, a, it's a very useful document um, because it tells you what sort of things you should be doing on Facebook, on Twitter, um, and, and the, the various channels and uh, thinking about things like the tone and the frequency and how do you actually grow your audience in the social media channels. So. Um, you can just change the word uh, camp and put meet up and uh, you've, yeah. you've, 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 you've almost there and I think we can probably add some extra flesh to it to yeah. bring yeah. it more into relevant to meet ups. Yeah. We have time for one more. Yep, one more question. One more? It's Europe. Well, actually it's an answer to his question. Ah, uh, cool. <laughs> Great. <laughs> what we do in the Netherlands, we have the, the Drupal Tech Talk, which is basically monthly or bi-monthly. Um, it's basically for devs only. It's not that hard, but uh, that's what happens because it's highly technical. Um, and what we do is we uh, ask companies where the developers are working, can we have uh, the dev talk at your office at night uh, and uh, provide us with food and beer, of course. <laughs> uh, and that works actually quite well because the, the workers at the company um, pick up the, the, the organization of that yeah. uh, tech talk. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's... it's um, I'm searching, I'm searching for the word. Yeah, so it sort of sus helps sustain itself. Yeah, it helps sustaining itself. And all the companies are actually uh, saying, oh, uh, can it be at our place the next time? Because, we, <laughs> because yeah. all, it's also a great way to promote your own company, of course, and have all the developers in your company. Mm. And what I like also very much about that setup is there are no managers involved. So you can talk about uh, clients and problems and uh, the, the Netherlands, uh, the market in the Netherlands is very small so it happens quite a lot that clients hop over from one uh, <laughs> a Drupal shop to another, oh my god, you got that client now? <laughs> That's actually quite cool. That's another reason to have meetups. Yeah. Yeah. And Gossip. no managers involved. That's Gossip. <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah, that's basking the Cool. Awesome. That's a great idea. Where can you find those kits? I don't know where those you find the kits. Oh. We had on the, <laughs> the pre we, yes. on the previous slide here. Up on the, the session page for this session, we're gonna and that, that the second bit.ly link there just goes to this session page. We're gonna update that with some links and information. Um, as you guys are getting that together, I mean, these documents are part of a sort of a bigger, bigger initiative. So it's a bit of a moving uh, feast. So these URLs uh, uh, send back to our 
uh, to our page on the Munich site, I think. Um, um, and as the document locations change, we'll update them on the Munich site, so you'll be able to find them as they get yeah. better. And we are full out of time, so please do right remember to. Uh, yeah, right on the nose. Please do remember to rate the session, as with all other ones. And thank you so much for coming. Yes, thanks a lot.